So can I ask? Yes, just introduce yourself. And yeah, on the right side here. Uh, my name is Anand Bhatt. I run a company called Chowki Services. Um, my question would be best addressed to Dr. Rajit uh, Kalgadgi. I happened to work in a, a public sector before, so, and I know a lot of uh, multinational companies have to thank public sectors for the talent they supplied. Now, we often complain that China has done a lot to, you know, as a government, and we are not doing it. Now, I'm sure if you compare the, the, the budgets of uh, BAR, DRDO, ISRO, there's a huge amount of uh, government R&D dollars, right? So you being from inside, if you can sort of drive the movements, for example, you mentioned uh, the OAS is not there. So if some of this government money you know, I'm sure the private sector will dance to the tunes if you give the budget to say, for this national objective, I want you to drive these projects. I think something similar is already happening in Chandrayaan, and there's a lot of public sector involvement, right? So to make the embedded system, ecosystem happen, I mean, those from inside, the government controlling the R&D budgets can do wonders. I'm sure you'll agree. Right. Uh, well, question well taken, but then uh, let me respond it. You know, when you say there is a lot of funding to some of the organizations that you just mentioned, like uh, Department of Atomic Energy or Space or Defense or DRDO and all that, the real fact is it's not enough. As a country, if you have to be self-reliant and, uh, you know, totally indigenous, the amount of uh, funding that needs to go in and on a sustained basis, not just for three years or five years, for 15 to 20 years, that has not happened. It, it's, we can't keep complaining because as a country we have got many other priorities and we need to give away only as much as we can afford. But to just, as a snapshot view, if you take uh, an audit of what happened out of successes that have come from the agencies that you mentioned, yes, maybe you can take a view that not much has happened. But let me share with you that the kind of uh, uh, you know, indigenization or self-reliance which has happened in this country is all in these sectors. And if you actually take the successes of this country as a whole, you will find that wherever we have succeeded, it is in those areas where there was a denial regime, where there were restrictions, where there were import bans. So only when such things are in place, we can actually apply uh, you know, more focused effort and develop it. Now, when you just mentioned OS, is OS not a, a focused effort? Probably no, because we have an option. We have got developed to a kind of reality where you can depend on some other solution which is already available to us. So people did not have go into development of an indigenous uh, like an OS or a GIS software or a database which are all relevant. So I, I think, uh, you know, f when you mentioned funding, yes, funding has gone in, but uh, it requires a lot more as a country to r get their best results out of it. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Question for one question for each of you. Let me introduce myself. I'm, I'm Apekshit Mule, and I'm a technology and business consultant at Mule's Consultancy Services. I've authored a thesis, really, and I'm going to ask you a question based on it. Firstly, uh, for Dr. Ajit, uh, with respect to the defense electronics, uh, in the United States semiconductor industry, since they have started the globalization and sent their manufacturing to Asia, today uh, the defense supply chain of US 40% of the defense supply chain is filled with counterfeit electronics, 40%. That's a very high number. And all these policies are trade back as research goes to the free trade policies the United States followed with China. My question to you is that if you want to make India a global manufacturing hub, how would you ensure that we do not send counterfeit electronics that others will start, mis uh, do not have any trust in us anymore in future? That's one question. Uh, can I ask the other questions to the respective? Uh, the question for Dr. Ashok is that when you mentioned 90% of your exports are to the developed nations, taking into consideration the slowdown, global slowdown that's happening, do you see a slowdown in your exports at this stage? Can you share with us your views? And for Dr. Suket, my question is uh, when we want to make India and we want to send our goods to developed nations, we rely on the ability of developed nations to run certain amount of trade deficits with us 
so that they will absorb all our manufactured goods. But there will be a time when they will not be able to run any more trade deficits. In that case, we will have to bank only on our domestic demand. So shouldn't it should be make in India, for India, and then for the world? Thank you very much. Anjit, you would like to begin? Right. So addressing the problem of uh, either the counterfeit products or lack of security or trap doors in the uh, designed products. It's not just in US, in any other defense uh, electronics world, there is always this concern and worry that uh, there, whatever we develop and deploy, there are a lot of vulnerabilities. Now, the, uh, the simplest answer for that is do everything in-house, don't depend on any standards, and don't network. But then this, this is the dichotomy that you have to go through. Whatever is digital, whatever is networked, is hackable, or uh, there is a price we have to pay on vulnerabilities arising out of that. But then uh, you cited the example of US for what we have analyzed and understood, while there is a, maybe a, an iota of fact that uh, there are quite a few uh, unwanted products or uh, unsafe products that are coming, but then on the critical strategic requirements of the US defense, they do have access to a foundry which does only for them, that is the strategic foundries. Okay. So, Ajit, of uh, course, Ajit, in uh, the, in the for, field for of security... For lack of time, yeah. um, if you could just conclude uh, very one or two sentences. Right. Please. In, the, in the background of security, nothing is absolutely secure. So we, there has to be uh, a line which draws between what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. Okay. Um, we won't be able to take any more questions. I think Ashok's uh, uh, response to your question will be the, will be the last. Well, uh, your fear is true, but, uh, you know, uh, it's, uh, it's always uh, true for any business. So our answer to this is we always develop, continuously develop new products, and simultaneously we find, uh, try to find new customers and new com market and for which we participate constantly in international exhibitions four to five in a uh, year. And that's the way we find uh, new customers and we, we sustain the whatever losses here, we make it up somewhere else. Thanks. Yeah, uh, Sukit, uh, uh, since we don't have time, uh, time one, left. One have excuse me, one last question. Who wants to force herself? Okay, yeah, please no, go no. ahead. I, I'm with you, friend. I'm Dr. Sandhya, representing NMIT, Nitai Meenakshi Institute of Technology. I'm from Academia. The one is, uh, as we know, uh, 2020, what we have target, uh, presently targeted, uh, our ongoing student or outgoing students are most important to contribute that. And as we know we, in the panel uh, members discussion, our, uh, tool, our technology is tool centric and embed system of course is going to be hardware software. software. And what we are finding uh, thing is of course government uh, agencies do support for projects uh, rising, but uh, if it is there should be some proper process or programs where we can address uh, outgoing students with some uh, tie-ups, it will be a great support for uh, days to go. So that Thank was you. not a question, but an order, what is to be done. <laughs> so I, I hope somebody is uh, uh, listening, you know, some bureaucrat is over here. Well, uh, uh, you know, sorry you won't take any more questions, but there are a lot of interesting, uh, you know, panels coming up, uh, panel discussions coming up. This was just the first one, ample opportunity available. Um, I just wanted to leave, uh, you know, one message with you, and especially, uh, what we have seen uh, as a part of uh, Tata Motors, and I've been, uh, you know, uh, part of this automotive industry now for many years, but especially watching what's happening in India in the last 10 years' time. And uh, I'm very happy to note that it is possible for electronic aggregates, even at lower volume, for example, engine management ECUs, yeah, or even airbag ECUs, to manufacture them, them in India. And uh, so we have good number of uh, you know, suppliers, MNCs, as well as uh, typical Indian suppliers who have set up their you know, hardware manufacturing uh, and uh, have ample embedded knowledge and are, give, are able to competitively you know, uh, survive uh, even at the low uh, volume game uh, in India. So that's, that's an indication for me. Hey guys, it's all possible. Uh, we need to just have the resolve 
uh, I think Dr. Radhakrishnan said in the morning, uh, the crux is to be you know, self-reliant uh, and, um, uh, and have confidence in, in yourselves that uh, you, you can do it. Yeah? And uh, if you take an example, not for electronics, but of course electronics was a major portion of it also. Uh, when Tata Motors did make the Nano, they started with a resolve and a vision that we'll make the least expensive car uh, in the world. And uh, we got phenomenal amount of support also from uh, the ecosystem. For example, typical, I mean, German suppliers also worked along with us and managed to make the impossible possible. So um, uh, with that, I think uh, that brings us uh, to the end of the session. I would like to thank uh, you know, the, the panelists you know, for uh, such one wonderful you know, uh, thoughts. And I hope that uh, you, know, you take back uh, some of them uh, with you in our endeavor on this journey that uh, with the help of IESA, which is acting like a catalyst, uh, that it just goes on and India can do you know, the similar wonder like is done uh, on the software, also on the embedded and uh, you know, hardware uh, side. Thank you so much you know, for being patient listeners. We'd like to thank the session. I'd like to request uh, Mr. Randeep Singh to please present our speakers with a small token of our appreciation. We'd like to thank Dr. Ajit. Thank you very much indeed, sir. I'd like to thank Mr. Sudhir Asija. And Dr. Suket Singhal. I'd also like to request uh, Mr. B.V. Naidu, Chairman of Sanjito Ventures, to give away the memento to our chairperson, Mr. Randeep Singh Kokar. I'd like to thank Mr. Randeep once again for chairing this session. And a big round of applause to the entire panel once again. Thank you very much.